Straight out of Africa. I am Y311H. And together with my bunny friends here, my friends, we say welcome, lots of love, and respect to yourself for clicking this video. Today, my friend, we dive in on a wild ride, good vibes ride, of reacting together to extremely good vibes videos, my friend, with the intentions of spreading love, peace, honesty, and forgiveness to the whole world together. I'd like you to join us on this mission by hitting that subscribe button if it's, you are new here and like button. Watch till the end, my friends, and kindly leave your comments there. You see? Now, I also have something here I would like to share with you, my friend, before we give thanks to our creator. And this something is from this Good Vibes book here, Book of Knowledge, The Guide of Life also. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, say, I seek refuge with the Lord and cherisher of mankind, the king or ruler of mankind, the God or judge of mankind, from the mischief of the whisperer of evil, who withdraws after his whisper, the same who whispers into the hearts of mankind, among jinns and among men. This one, my friend, is from the last surah of the Quran, the mankind, one going down to the end. My friend, let's give thanks. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Thank you for the videos, Father. Thank you for this message that we have, Father. Help us to spread it to the whole world together. In Jesus' mighty name, we do pray, trusting and believing. Amen. Let's dive in good vibes. Let's oh, look at this face beside the moon. This was seen in Tijuana. This is crazy, my friends. Are you seeing this? You can see the same face as seen in other settings from a different angle. And now this is extremely bizarre and mysterious. And this is the first videos, my friend. And it's because of stuff like this that happened in this realm we are in, my friends, that serve as a constant reminder we should really unite. Love one another, because in these times we are living in. Who knows, it might be the end times. And my friend, we need to spread love to everyone, you see? Hit that like button. This experiment shows the effect of a lubricant. We use a block of metal polished to an even finish and a metal incline as smooth as glass. Without lubrication, the block will not slip. The two metal surfaces are in actual contact. However, if we lubricate the same surfaces, keep them apart with oil, the block will slide of its own weight. Here, magnified thousands of times with the help of microphotography, we can see what happens when a metal surface glides over another surface of metal riding on a film of oil. Oil is a good lubricant because under high or low temperatures, it keeps an unbroken film to hold sliding surfaces apart and it won't evaporate. Oil is liquid enough to get into small openings between closely fitting parts. Oil is thick enough to form a cushion that stays where it is needed. And it is elastic enough to make a film under pressure. A small flywheel bearing shows why it is necessary to use a good lubricant. We first remove all the grease or oil. When we spin the wheel, the metal surfaces rub against each other. Without oil, they grow hot. The soft bearing metal is melted. Friction binds the moving parts together, and soon the flywheel will stop. Without the protection of oil, both surfaces are ruined. There are three general ways of circulating a supply of lubricating oil to the parts of a machine. 
we can arrange a bath of oil so that moving parts can splash into it for lubrication. We can provide a supply of oil on a higher level so that it will trickle down through a system of tubing onto the moving parts. The force of gravity furnishes the power to carry a steady flow of lubricant where it is needed. If we want an extra amount of lubrication, we can force a stream under pressure directly onto the sliding surfaces. By controlling the pressure, we can control the lubrication for different speeds. There are many moving parts and many types of moving surfaces in the automobile engine. Consequently, the engines in our cars today use all three methods of lubrication to provide for the wide range of speeds and loads. The heart of the lubrication system is the oil pump. In the oil pump, the two revolving gears create a suction as the teeth move apart. This suction draws oil from the storage reservoir or oil pan. The gear teeth carry the oil around as they revolve and then, as they mesh together, force it to the engine parts. Each gear tooth sends a strong spurt of oil and at normal engine speeds, the result is a steady, smooth flow. In the modern engine, the main bearings carry the load of the crankshaft as it whirls at hundreds of revolutions each minute, and plenty of lubrication is needed. To get this lubrication, a constant stream of oil is pumped under pressure directly into the main bearings. The camshaft has the job of opening and closing the valves and needs an elastic cushion to protect it from friction. The oil flows through tubes to the bearings which carry the camshaft and more oil flows out through a nozzle onto the timing gears which drive the camshaft. To keep the valves in smooth operation, oil is pumped up into the valve mechanism. A special method is used to lubricate the connecting rods. A high pressure stream of oil is forced through nozzles in the base of the engine and each jet of oil is accurately aimed to strike a scoop or dipper on the bottom of a connecting rod. The oil is forced up into the connecting rod bearing by the scoop-like action of the dipper as it strikes the jet. In scooping up water, a locomotive uses the same principle. A special motion picture camera, equipped with what is called a stroboscope, lets us see the action of the dipper on a crankshaft that is actually revolving at a speed of 3,600 times every minute. There is a hole in the bottom of the connecting rod through which the oil passes from the dipper into the bearing. At high engine speeds, the oil enters the dipper at the rate of 120 miles an hour. The barrel shape of the dipper picks up less oil at low speeds than at high speeds. And as the connecting rod splashes into the trough, it throws a spray of oil over the cylinder walls. This spray of oil forms a smooth film to lubricate the speeding piston as it slides up and down in the cylinder. A special ring on the piston controls the amount of this film. The excess oil is scraped off and carried through holes in the side of the piston to furnish the main lubrication for the piston pin. A steady stream of oil flows through the engine, bathing the crankshaft, the camshaft, valves, and pistons and connecting rods, covering all the moving parts with a protecting film. The modern engine uses the same oil over and over again, four times a minute at normal speed. In order to do this, it must be cleaned and cooled. Each time the oil passes through the engine, it is filtered so that dirt and impurities can be kept from the polished surfaces. The oil is cooled in the bottom of the engine and allowed to rest in the oil pan. Efficient crankcase ventilation removes hot corrosive gases so they cannot contaminate the pure oil. A tremendous stream of cooling, cushioning lubricant is pumped through the engine. By connecting a hose to the pump and arranging a return pipe, we can see the amount of oil that flows from the pump each minute 
that the engine is in operation, enough to fill a bathtub in three minutes. Closely fitting, highly polished parts, moving at high speeds, year in and year out, demand an adequate supply of good, clean oil to protect them from friction and wear, to give power, economy, smooth, silent operation, and long life, with every part riding a film of oil. What is on behind the moon and the plane above the moon? Hmm, how is this possible? Is the moon not supposed to be millions of kilometers away? My friend, according to how we learned at school, how many kilometers is uh, the moon from Earth? Really? Oh my god. But on this flight, these guys can see the moon. They must have flied very high. That pilot may is like he took them above the moon. Hey! Is this even safe? Look. Oh my god. Oh, thank you. This is crazy. Look. These guys can see the moon when they are in the plane. Now well, there is something here that is not right. Either the moon is uh, below how it's supposed to be, or this pilot decided to give these guys an adventure and take them way above the clouds. Hmm. Is it even safe for for planes to fly in, uh, near the moon or on those uh, heights above the moon or above the ground almost reaching the moon? This is crazy. Hey, this one I need to convert my science teacher. Because uh, there is something here, we have been seeing things that are mind blowing. Look at this. What is Stoicism and what does it really mean? Well, it's a philosophy. It originates in ancient Greece. It makes its way to Rome. And it's this way of sort of living and being. It's not about emotionlessness, I would say, but it, it is about, I think, being less emotional about things that you don't control. Mark Strauss's meditations, like the most powerful man in the world. He's writing this little riff on how he's like, the people you meet today are going to be annoying and obnoxious and dishonest and frustrating and all these things. And he's basically going like, it's on you if this surprises you. Right. Marcus, he can do whatever he wants, but he realizes like, if I'm not in command of myself, it doesn't matter how powerful I am. This isn't going to go very well. Well, come look at this snake. Oh my God. I told you today's videos will be did. I didn't expect also we to come across this snake. Ooh, is this an animal snake or English people is trying? I think this is the spot. This good vibes guy finds a hole in the middle of nowhere and discovers the craziest thing ever in his life, my friend. So look at this. Here is the hole that good vibes guy came across. Oh, he conspicuous steadily true hole in the ground. Oh my God. Hey, English people, I'm surprised that they really love how your curiosity leads us to guessing crazy things here sometimes. I mean, look, it's next under a big oak tree. Hmm, oak tree, this is crazy. And there are stairs inside that hole. It even gets crazier. Now imagine, my friends, this good vibes guy he did not just see the hole alone. He saw the hole and decided this like he would enter the hole. Look at this. This is unbelievable. Good people of us, could you have done so? They noticed this before and uh, a rush to used to go up further. It looks like there were stairs that used to go up further. They decided to use the stairs there, you see? Oh, and inside the hole, there's even writing. This is crazy. Crazy. There is a perfect writing inside that hole, below the ground. Do you think some good vibes people used to live here? Or creatures? Oh. It's very low tech, but a good vibes guy says he's feeling strange inside the hole. But anyway, he decides going down down the hole after feeling strange. Oh my god. This feels like the beginning of some horror movies, my friend. You see? But anyway, it's some good vibes guy doing exploration. The lights are on and it's just crazy. Look at where they lead him to. Oh wow 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 wow. Okay. Which type of technology is this? You say, good people of Earth, I see you know a lot of things through the comment section. Can you tell us? You know what ages or what years did people used to use such type of writing technology? You see, they reflect lights using what looks like mirrors. It's just crazy. Yo, imagine going down there alone. This good vibes guy went there down alone on himself. 
He didn't even call a friend. He came there alone. Oh, this is crazy. Now, hey, oh, all these are for entertainment purposes. But you, my friend, I'd love you to leave your comments on uh, what you would have done in this situation. If you are in this good vibes guy's shoes, you see? Would you have come all this way all by yourself to check? Maybe see if, uh, who knows, you'll come across uh, some skinwalker down there and... Uh, what? Look at this. He drives even drawing stones. My God. This good vibes guy, I think he should realize he might be in someone's home. Because this is place did not just occur naturally. Look at this. Do you think this is just a natural occurrence of stones? No. This thing is precisely cut. Ooh. And the brother man says he feels like he saw someone. And guess what, my friends? He's continuing to go. Oh, this is like, unbelievable. You see, when you see this, it was definitely built by some people or creature. And now when you see them or something that looks like it is moving, it means that thing might be on its home. Now imagine that thing is seeing you or expecting you as a stranger. You have just come to their home throwing stones. Oh, no, 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 no. This one is crazy. Good vibes guy is even searching for the creature that he thinks he has seen across the stairs. Oh, what? Now, you see, he has gone all this way down. Imagine if you find something there that is not fully full of good vibes and decides uh, to give him a jog, you see? Help him jogging uh, back to where he came from. He would have to go through all these stairs. It's crazy. And he says he feels like there is the smell of cut grass down there. Ha! Chlorophyll. This is crazy, my friends. Now, if he feels that, to this point, up to this point, I think myself, I could have already gone back. The moment I see that the stairs are not ending, and the lights are still on, I could have gone back. If anything happened, like the lights just going off, you see? Nothing bad. The lights just went off in that situation. Good vibes guy down there, freezing in darkness in some place he does not know. What do you think could have happened? This is crazy. Let's continue seeing. Whoa, guy. He's hearing things and noises and he's all the way down there. He comes across this wooden door here. What? What do you think is on the other side of the door? My God, he opens the door. English people, this curiosity, is it taught at school there or what happens? You see, seeing this video, it's even hard to believe that some real true good vibes guy, not in a movie scene, good vibes guy on his own real life came across a cave and decided to go in there all by himself. And guess what? Inside the cave, he even finds some metal door that looks like it can close on its own at any time. And the good vibes guy also decides to go through that door. Oh my god. English people. Hey, this one, I need you to really leave comments about it. You see? No, English people, is it normal for you to do this? You see? You just stick and read you. Oh my god. You see, there is a saying that goes, I don't know if that saying came from English lads, but I had a saying saying that curiosity killed the cat. You see, don't know what the cat came across, but now this is crazy. Yo, hey. But thanks to this good waves guy, he came to see all this place. And now we know there is a place like this that exists, that is completely mysterious. You see, it looks like it used to be some people's office and this one is the reception. This one is crazy, extremely. What do you think was going on down there? Desks, or it was some secret base uh, from the government. My friend, leave your comments, please. All this is for entertainment purposes. And kindly hit that like button, subscribe, and uh, share the videos with your friends and family. Hey. Oh my God, this one looks like it was some offices that were abandoned. But now, why would people need to build offices uh, in places like this? Down there, there is even shopping centers. I, this one is crazy. What used to happen down there, my friends? Could you have, how, would you happen to know or have an idea of what could have happened down there, you see? This one is crazy, extremely crazy. Oh. Good vibes adlings. Do you think there are some people or creatures that used to live there? 
In 2017, this home security footage seems to pick up a strange flash of blue light and a shift in time. Looking closer, the flash seems instant, is blue, and casts no shadow. That was weird. It was almost like plasma. Everything in the room turned completely white, almost like an explosion, and my eyes started burning. It's really weird. The flash appears instant, but looking at the footage closely, there is a jump in time, which the owner says lasted seven seconds. It traveled almost like it was a train coming across the room, slowly coming in for a stop. Is this an elaborate hoax, a glitch in the matrix, or something more mysterious? Massive alien ship headed towards Earth. So I've been monitoring this um, leak uh, for the last number of days. Um, there appears to be a large object um, several light years away that has corrected its um, position several times, meaning it is intelligent. It is also heading right towards Earth and may be here as soon as 2027. So it's all starting to make sense. Um, the notes handed around at um, George W. Bush Sr.'s funeral, um, which obviously we've never got an answer to. Um, I think they were told then um, that this was inbound. So I'll play the video for you now. This is the rumor. Um, but as yet, it hasn't been disproved. Aliens could be on the way. Contact. So an object that they spotted. This person that I've been talking to was asked to not talk about the details yet. But they can tell me that the first discovery, the lights, came from a ESA the European Space Agency. The other one is coming from the USA Canadian team, also from James Webb though, but they are the ones leading this investigation. It was tasked from either the NSA or the DOD. They don't know who's the one tasking it, but yes, it is part of this quote unquote threat narrative. The signal that is incoming is the big unknown. What they know is that it is coming, what they don't know is what the hell it is. I am trying to get people from Congress, either Congress people or staffers, to give me an official quote. Another detail that was uh, given to this person that I'm talking to is that this object is making moves, breaking moves, and course correcting moves. So that means that it is not a natural satellite, that means that it is not an asteroid either. It's coming this way and it is massive. I wasn't given speed of this object. I wasn't given dimensions. It was very vague. And this is what, a, what Congress people are being told as well. But there is another nugget of information that they're being told, which is the reason they are doing these unclassified briefings because apparently there is some level of urgency that doesn't mean that it's a threat but it needs to be looked at and it needs to be studied uh, Lisondo is already talking about it Matt Ford is already talking about it I know that more people are gonna start coming forward with it over the next 10 days or so Congress people are being briefed about it as we speak how confident are you that it's true that there is an object detected by James Webb that's headed towards Earth that is massive. Like how how confident are you in that not in that information you got from your source? More than confident, it's like I'm weary that this information is being passed around. I don't know if it's true. I know that it is being passed around. Sure. That I'm confident of. Sure. But I wanna know their motive for talking about this. And it. why it's being like urgently communicated. Because is this tied to what Lou was saying on, on Matt's show? Yeah, it is. Right. You think those two things are the same thing? Is that confirmed or you think it is? I asked and uh, I, I didn't get a no. I got a, I can talk about it.
I remember my high school health teacher saying that the human egg is the size of a period at the end of a sentence. Now that I'm an embryologist, I can check that for myself. In one of my previous videos, I showed that the egg is large enough to be seen with the naked eye. I had to make a dot with a marker the same size as the period on a transparent dish in order to see it on the microscope. I then placed a small drop of medium on top of the dot and added an egg. And here are the results. The egg is definitely smaller, but I think the period at the end of a sentence is a pretty good size reference. Good job, Mrs. White. Here's the answer. So if I pull up here, the bike rolls forward. I think that's fine. I'm not pushing with my hand, I'm just holding it up. If I pull down here, let's see what happens. It rolls forward. And you don't have to believe me, you can do it yourself. Try it yourself, it's not hard to do. Now for the explanation. Explanation number one. If I pull on the wheel, then the net force on the wheel is to the left. So the center of mass accelerates to the left according to Newton's second law. And that seems weird, but it's true, it's true. We can still deal with it that way. The second explanation is to look at torque. If I look at the rotation about the point of contact, I have a torque, a force, a distance, and it's gonna make the whole wheel, the whole system rotate that way. Also moves forward. So again, try it yourself because it's so fun. The end. Let's see what lemon water does to my blood sugar. I'm gonna be using the juice from half of a lemon with about 10 or 11 ounces of water here. There are a lot of reasons why people drink lemon water, especially first thing in the morning. But today I wanna to see if it has an effect on my fasting blood sugar levels that you can see up here. I haven't eaten for 16 hours and I have an empty stomach. Let's give this a try to see what it does to my blood sugar. All right, it's been just over an hour since I've had the lemon water. Let's have a look at the glucose monitor to see if anything happened. And there is no blood sugar spike here. This is simply because there's not enough carbohydrates in that lemon juice to cause a glucose spike. There's only about one to one and a half grams of carbohydrates in the juice of half a lemon. And that's simply not enough to cause a glucose spike for me. Now with regard to the benefits of drinking lemon water, Obviously it promotes hydration, but it can also help with digestion and due to the vitamin C, it can also improve your immune system. Remember that individual results will vary. Stay tuned for more. I'm 53 and if you're younger than me, I hope you've already learned this. If not, please listen. Start paying attention only to how your life feels to you and forget completely about how it looks to others. It only matters how it feels to you. And if you want to protect your peace, that's what you have to do. Don't accept things you know you don't stand for. Don't make yourself smaller for anyone. And consider your thoughts. Every single day, consider your thoughts. Because the life you have right now today is an exact reflection of what you were thinking about five years ago. Look around. It was all a thought that you had at some point. Protect your peace, protect your thoughts. Don't let anyone, anyone matter more than you do to yourself. And that's a harsh statement. Your family would disagree. Your spouse might disagree, your kids might disagree, your co-workers might disagree, but you are the only person who is going to advocate for you. Make choices every single day that reflect who you truly are and who you truly want to be. And if the choice that you're considering doesn't match that. Stay true to you. You'll be so much happier. When you're listening to someone's heart with a stethoscope and you hear those two sounds, lub dub, lub dub, lub dub, that's not the atria contracting and then the ventricle contracting. That's not the lub, dub. It's the valves, there's four of them, closing. And as they close, they sort of snap shut. And that's the sound you hear. Now, there's 
two valves on the outside and those valves starting from the right hand side that would be the um, the tricuspid on the right you know you try to be right tricuspid valve and then the mitral valve on the left hand side they close at the same time and that gives you your first heart sound it's called s1 that's the lub right the outside valves closing the two valves in the middle they're your semi-lunar valves meaning half moon valves and they are the pulmonic valve on the right hand side and your aortic valve on the left hand side and that makes the second heart sound when they close together so you've got lub on the outside and dub in the middle lub dub lub dub as they close but if they don't close at exactly the same time, then those heart sounds, they get split. So you might get lub up dub lub up dub If you've got, say, mitral stenosis, stiffening of the mitral valve. Likewise, if you've got aortic stenosis, if that aortic valve in the middle next to the pulmonic valve, remember those two are supposed to close together, if, if, if one of them is stiffened, like an aortic stenosis, then you might get the pulmonic valve closing just before the aortic valve does. So you might get a lub dubub, lub dubub, yeah? And if like the outside ones and the inside ones are stiffened, then you might get four heart sounds, lub dubub, lub dubub, lub dubub. So lub dub's normal because it indicates the valves are closing, they're snapping shut, they're nice and compliant, and the heart's beating in sequence. If you get more than two heart sounds, consider getting somebody else to have a listen to the heart sounds and do an assessment on your patient, because that's not normal. There should only be two heart sounds. Lub-dub, 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 lub-dub.